I'm a clinical uh, educator, nurse educator for ECOS. I'm going to talk to you about what ECOS is, what it does, how it works, and we're done. How's that sound? Okay, so the very first thing is ECOS is acoustic pulse thrombolysis. Now, what does that mean to you guys? Absolutely nothing. What it means in layman's terms is we use ultrasound therapy at 2.2 megahertz, which is emitted from this box. And we use thrombolytics, which is from your pumps. All of them are delivered simultaneously into the patient, into the blood clot via my catheter right here. Okay, I'll draw your attention right here to the blue box, which we're going to call the Ecos box. It's a cart with your IV pumps hijacked to it. There's a purpose for that, and I'll blow over all that in just a minute. Okay, so first order of business, this is my catheter. Okay, everybody know what this guy is right here. Sheet. It's a six French sheet, okay? This is a universal, it's green, it's a six French sheet. This is not part of my device whatsoever. However, this device is utilized in order to get my catheter into the patient's body. Does that make sense? So it's how will it be is not part of my device. I do want to talk about it in a minute because you're gonna be seeing and managing fluids running directly through it, okay? So <clears throat> let's talk about ECOs and what do we treat? We treat PEs, either unilateral or bilateral. We treat arterial blood clots, and we also treat DVTs in the legs, okay? And really anywhere, you know, we go up to the vena cava, no problem. We can treat anything in the body, we're not contraindicated, um, as long as it's three millimeters or smaller, we cannot treat it, okay? We don't treat anything in the heart, we don't treat anything in the brain, okay? So what you guys are talking about here is this. So, <clears throat> let's just pretend my fist is a blood clot, okay? The ECOS, catheter goes directly into the blood clot, the doctor puts it in in the ORs, cath labs, IR labs, whatever, they put it directly into the center of it. When we turn on ultrasound, these British guys figured out that when you turn on ultrasound in the blood clot at 2.2 megahertz, it opens the blood clot up, pops it right open. Now, standard blood clots in our bodies, we all know that we're licensing these every day, correct? We have free-floating TPA and free-floating blood clots in our bodies. The blood clots have natural TPA receptor sites that are on them, and the TPA binds to them, they melt away, and we never know that we're dissolving them, correct? So what happens though is when these blood clots get a little bit more mature, the fiber and strands actually cover the TPA receptor sites, and now you have this big, tight, massive bunch of crap in there. All right, the TPA cannot bind, and they get symptomatic, so they show up in the ERs. So the ER doctor comes in, sends them over to us, and the ORs, they're gonna put the Ecos catheter in. So the Ecos catheter goes in, 2.2 megahertz of ultrasound, it pops, the blood clot straight open. Now the belly of the beast is exposed. The TPA receptor sites inside are now exposed. TPA that flows from your IV pumps through my catheter goes into the blood clot like a slipper hose, binds to the TPA receptor sites, and thrombolysis occurs. Does that make sense? We don't break anything up. We don't shake anything up. It's the biggest misconception people think. But what happens if a blood clot breaks off during the thrombolysis? It doesn't. It's the same thing as if I took an ice cream cone in the summertime, not right now, and dropped it on the concrete outside, it's gonna melt and float away. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> let's talk about the catheter, talk about the machine, and we're done. So our catheter, we're not gonna talk about how it goes in, I wanna talk about what the design of this catheter is, okay? It comes in two pieces, all right? This first clear piece is a giant, long 18 gauge IV catheter, just like you guys normally use in nursing. Okay, it's hollow, fluid flows from one end all the way through the catheter and out the very tip. Remember this thing is inside the blood clot, fluid comes right out here. That fluid is called normal saline. Normal saline from your pump flows through the port labeled coolant. Right here, it's a coolant port, it's blue. All right, coolant flows from here through the catheter and out the tip. The reason you have normal saline flowing through my catheter is because of the wire right here. This ultrasound wire, you will never see it. The reason I'm telling you about it is that it is gonna be inside the catheter, placed in the OR. <clears throat> this ultrasound wire is the same ultrasound that is emitted from this machine. It produces warmth, and you have to have coolant flowing over the ultrasound wire to cool it off. The rates for the normal saline, I have clearly marked right here for you blue at 35 milliliters an hour minimum rate to 120 milliliters maximum rate, okay? The reason there's a fluid range is because you can titrate your normal saline up if you get an over temp alarm on the machine. If you receive an over temp alarm or any alarm on the machine, you're gonna call my cell phone, which is right here. 
right here and on, on the machine. Okay, I'll talk about that at the end. So, TPA is the next guy. That TPA is gonna be flowing out of your pump that's hijacked on my machine. He's gonna be flowing through the drug port right here, okay? Drug port is labeled red for high risk medications, TPA, drug. It's gonna be flowing directly from your IV pump into this port through my catheter, again, but a separate chamber. There is no cross contamination between the normal saline and the TPA. It's a separate tiny chamber that flows through. Okay, now, anyone garden? Anyone know what a sucker hose is? Okay, so a sucker hose basically is where you have fluid that trickles out of a hose into something like you're gonna water a plant. But you don't really wanna water a specific part of your garden. This is the same thing. The doctors place this catheter in the OR here <clears throat> and they know how to place it in the length of the catheter based on my two thumbs right here. There are platinum marker bands. You will never see these platinum marker bands, but why I'm talking to you about them is because in between the two platinum marker bands on this particular catheter are a whole bunch of tiny holes smaller than a human hair. The TPA flows through your pump into my catheter at the drug port, flows all the way down and trickles out of these tiny holes into the blood clot. Remember, the blood clot is right here. So it trickles right into the blood clot, binds the TPA receptor sites, and you get thrombolysis, okay? I wanna draw your attention to these guys right here. These are the ports we've talked about, your drug and your coolant port. <clears throat> Nurses, what you don't ever wanna do is aspirate from these two drug ports or the coolant port. You don't wanna ever aspirate from these ports whatsoever. Even if you got a doctor that's complaining about, I want PT, PTT labs drawn right now, I want an ACT drawn, I want blood yesterday, do it right now. If it's a brand new nurse, you're gonna be looking at these valves and saying, that's a very tasty bunch of valves I can get blood immediately from. Don't do it, okay? <laughs> now, this sheet right here, that I also wrote up for you, clearly shows in red, do not aspirate from these two ports. The reason you don't want to aspirate is because <clears throat> the tiny sucker hose, remember, tiny ports, if you pull blood into those ports, you cannot clear them out. The catheter is ruined, you have to call a doctor and tell them you just clawed off the catheter, and we all know how that conversation will go. There will be a nuclear explosion impact to you, and some people will be dead. Guys, okay? So, moving right on up, you're going to see two wires coming off of the catheter. Okay? They're exactly the same as pulse sock connectors, guys. Exactly the same, all right? They go in one way. They're gonna be hooked up from the OR prior to the arrival here, okay? That's the dream. They're gonna be hooked up to this thing. We call the CIC cable. You're gonna call it the ECOS cable. White to white, black to black, shape to shape. It only goes in one way, all right? Once it's done, draw your attention to the machine right here. <clears throat> the very first thing I want to tell you about is the yellow light flashing. You want to make sure that when you receive a port, a report from the OR, you don't want to take a report if this yellow light is not on like that. Okay? For continuity of care, the OR knows they have to get this thing set up prior to arrival in your PACU. If it's not fair, then they bring a patient over without this thing hooked up because you guys don't hook these things up. You only maintain them. So do not take a report without the yellow light flashing. That is the old flight we're talking about. Yo, light flashing, Ecos waves crashing. That's how you know the Ecos portion of this machine is on and running. Your IV fluid should be on and running, and the Ecos machine should be on and running. <clears throat> the last thing I'll tell you about is this guy right here. All right, that's the battery. It's just like a transport battery um, monitor when you guys transport stairs. You know, you always have to plug them in. Same thing here. This guy has a one hour battery charge. You need to make sure that you have it plugged in. So when the team from the OR comes into your packing unit, just waltz right over there and plug it into the wall. They're gonna probably do the same thing, but you wanna make sure. Cause here's the thing. The battery may go dead because you don't have a patient's room upstairs ready, right? So they may be down here for a little while. After 45 minutes or so, this machine's gonna shut off. And all of your stuff's gonna shut off. And then you're gonna have a pucker factor of 12 on a scale of one to 10, because you don't know what to do. Here's what you do. To solve 99% of your problems, plug this guy in first, make sure this yellow light is on and flashing. It's gonna solve 99% of your problems. Any other problems with this machine, you're gonna call my number right here, Mr. PW, you're gonna call me. Holidays, weekends, nights, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna get paid to do. My personal cell phone right here, call me. If you don't remember, I'll get that in a minute. <clears throat> don't worry about it, just give me a buzz, I'll help you through it. Um, what else can I tell you? There are two buttons on this machine, start and stop. This display right here is very, very 
user friendly. This is the Ecos Blue Box. This is the Ecos Control Cable. And this is my catheter that plugs into the box for right here. Okay, what you wanna know is this is a circuit, electrical circuit here. If any part of that circuit is disabled, the machine's gonna alarm. There is a mute button right here. You press the mute button and all of a sudden you can think. Okay, and then we're gonna solve the issue. That's a very simple issue to solve. We plug it back in, the machine does a self check. <clears throat> What's important to remember nurses that, that this machine does not self start. That's the alert that says, hey, I'm ready to be restarted. You have to press the start button. Just like your IV pumps, if you change the settings, it does not self start, you have to press the start button. Same thing here. Now, the stop button, there's two reasons why we're gonna press stop. All right, again, I've written it for you right here, okay? <clears throat> two reasons why you're gonna stop ultrasound, and we can, as nurses, stop ultrasound in Georgia. Here's how, without having to call a doctor. Number one, you stop ultrasound if it's a PE, okay? Now, if there's an extended period of time where the patient's down here, and you guys have to do an echocardiogram, okay? If you do not stop ultrasound, and the echocardiogram tech comes, all they're gonna see is a whole bunch of white artifact on the screen. Okay, if you know that recording on tech, play a joke, leave it running, see what happens, it's pretty funny. Otherwise, press the stop button right here, let them do their test, and when it's done, it's not self-starting, you just have to press the green start button, we know it's on now. Nice, you have your crashing. Perfect, yellow light flashing equals waves crashing. All right, the second reason we're gonna stop ultrasound is for arterial blood clots only. Okay, our arteries are our big pipes that are keeping our pulses going. If you have a blood clot in our legs and we need to assess pedal pulses with our Doppler machines, if you don't stop ultrasound and you try to assess pulses with your microphone, you're gonna hear a bunch of crickets. Okay, <clears throat> so stop ultrasound, assess your pedal pulses. When it's done, press the start button. Yellow light flashing equals wave crashing. All right? So that's just with the Doppler. That's just with the Doppler. You can still palpate all you want to, absolutely. Yeah. For anyone who's that kid, you're not ever gonna know ultrasound. You don't ever feel ultrasound, you know, whatsoever. You have no idea. So it's not gonna hurt the patient, anything like that. Um, again, this sheet, you're gonna retain what I told you right now, except for your video, you're gonna retain 5% of what I told you. And I'm completely okay with that. Absolutely no disrespect. That's why I wrote this sheet out for you, okay? You cannot go to MRI, why? Because this is a giant metal beacon, okay? <laughs> However, you can go to CT with all the infinite pieces of equipment you have in this vacuum, OR, ICUs, you can't remember everything. So I wrote it for you right there. No MRI, but you can't go to CT, which is more appropriate because when you're using high-risk medications like Eprin and TPA, you're gonna wanna make sure you know which department you can go to. Now, talking about TPA. TPA is not part of my device. However, you're gonna be having a TPA drip on your pumps. The reason being, is that the TPA flows through the side arm of the sheath at a maintenance fluid, okay? Even though this is not part of my device, you will have that third fluid flowing on your IV pumps. So you will see it when you get a report. Does that make sense? It's going through the side arm of the sheath. Make sense? Cool. Everyone's got that look. I didn't hear okay. <laughs> So heparin is the third drip. You have a okay. pump, you have three pumps on your machine. Saline coolant, TPA, the coolant and drug go through these two ports. The third one is hep saline, correct? Heparin saline, y'all are running heparin saline. And this is typically gonna be going through the side arm of the sheath. Now, this is how the Ecos catheter lays right here to answer your question. This is how it's gonna look. And this is exactly how it's gonna look. It's gonna be sitting just like this, taped down like Fort Knox all over the leg. All right, you can have it here, you can have it IJ, or you can have it brachial, wherever the physician chooses to put it. It's gonna be the same no matter what. Same fluids, the same everything. Questions? So this part, we can draw blood. Normal saline, TPA. Yeah, and they're labeled. They're clearly labeled for y'all, just to recap. So, and drug. So every we can draw catheter, blood from here, right? Every catheter is labeled. They're all manufactured in the United States by a bunch of people with tiny hands and big glasses. It's really pretty cool. <clears throat> but the drug is the TPA, which is off your pump. It's flowing directly here. Your normal saline is flowing out of your pump directly to the coolant. Your hep saline is flowing directly to the side arm of the sheath. It can go through the side arm of the sheath or peripherally. 
It doesn't matter because it's systemic health yeah. problem. Yeah. So if it's running through the arm and not here, it's okay. And yes, you can draw blood from here as long as your hospital protocol allows. Why is this? Because remember earlier I told you do not aspirate from these two ports? Because they're way down here where all the magic happens. Way down here where the sucker hose is. This sheath is tiny and he's way up here. Yeah. So you can draw blood right from there. Just draw you a 10 cc waist like you normally would. And then proceed to get your labs. So we would just have to have an order draw from the central Absolutely. lab. Absolutely. That's exactly right. So any other questions? The last thing I'm going to leave you with is this. I've told you a couple times, and for those who just came in, this is the last thing. I've been over here twice. All right? If for any reason there's a question about setup, maintenance, hooking up, anything, you call me. My number is right here, directly to this cell phone, which is my personal one. My family has this number, my dad, my mom, everything. Just call me anytime, and I'll be happy to help you. That's what we get paid to do. And as a nurse, I want to help y'all so that nobody makes, you know, judgment calls or issues with Who decides patients. the right of the TPA? The so doctor does. Okay. It's one milligram an hour on average. Your TPA is going to run on average at one milligram an hour. Okay. Okay. That's typically the standard dose. That's what all of our data shows. Your coolant is going to start at 35 milliliters an hour. And then your heparin is usually, as I'm looking at your sheet right here, at 400 units an hour. Okay. So the doctor decides what the doses and the rates are. Okay. Any questions? Do you love it?